Today I want to build some epic bases for your gaming miniatures. Like the kind of stuff you might use for your characters. Alright, I'm pumped. Let's go! I want to make a beach with a cool windswept sand look. The first thing we'll do is sculpt some waves. For this, I'm using Milliput. And what's doing the lion's share of the work here is a fairly flexible chisel shaped color shaper. Try saying that five times fast. Chisel shaped color shaper, chisel shaped color shaper, chisel shaped color shaper, blah. To get the right look, I make semi random wavy lines that intersect by dragging the tool through the milliput. It's important to remember that you should angle the tool inwards eventually to create peaks at the top of each wave. It's a subtle detail that makes all the difference when trying to render sand blowing around. With the general shape in place, I took a damp brush and softened the super sharp edges of the milliput and also got rid of some of the tiny little specks. Now, as you're all aware, a beach has got to have bottles with messages in them or bottles of rum. A while back, I 3D printed a shelf with a variety of little bottles and barrels on them, so I decided to snip one of them off and stick it in the sand. Speaking of, time to apply some sand. For my adhesive, I essentially used thin down PVA glue to avoid thicker glue obscuring my sculpted detail. I also made sure it wasn't pooling in the recesses. I then sifted on dried and ground up dirt onto the base through some nylon stocking and tapped off the excess. It's important that you get a product that has very small granularity and also taps off nicely. Before this, I tried baking soda and various powdery substances like flour and they gooped up and did not render the sculpted sand waves nicely. And yes, gooped up is a scientific term. Because I'm impatient, I sealed this in with super glue thin so I could move on to base coating. I began with a desaturated brown tone, intending for this to be my darkest shadow, and then applied some off-white yellow highlight in multiple stages from one side to get my yellow sandy color, and so you could also see the nice waves. You could also dry brush this and it would look fantastic. Once I finished, I was a little dissatisfied with the color. This seems like a fairly realistic white sand beach, but I'd rather it have more color. So I added some yellow ink to my highlights and some orange ink to my shadows, and that sorted it out nicely. You could skip this step by simply starting with more saturated tones in the first place. Lastly, I airbrushed on some blue to the side of the base that was slanted down a little bit. My plan was to add some water coming up on the shore. I gave my bottle a quick base coat and a highlight and it was on to adding water. I've purchased a lot of weird art materials in my career and what I had laying around was liquid sand from Liquitex. It dries glossy and clear and has a little texture in it. It can also be sculpted nicely with a brush and stays where you put it. I felt like this was a great option for water with some bubbly texture built right in and there are so many options for water with similar properties. Many hobby brands make a water substance like this, but essentially they're all forms of acrylic gloss gel which you can buy in large quantities from brands like Golden or Liquitex. Once that was dried nice and clear, I applied a few gamer grass micro tufts and something that looked like cattails to the base in moderation. I wanted the sand to be the main detail. I painted the almighty black base rim to frame it all up and it was done. Now you have a cool beach base for your pirate themed zombie army or something probably less cool than pirate zombies. On to the next base. We're going full bizarro mirror world with this one. I started out with some thin clear plastic that you find on sprues. I cut a disc of this with a circle cutter that roughly matched the diameter of the base. I then cut it into three different pieces. Then I adhered some aluminum tape to the underside of the pieces of thin plastic and trimmed the tape to size. Aluminum tape is something you might use for appliances or to seal gaps in ductwork. It's also very shiny without having any visible mica flakes that you might find in typical hobby metallic paint. Once I had those trimmed up, I glued them to the base, remembering the orientation from where I cut them. The thin plastic gives the ground a very smooth, glass-like appearance, while also making sure the tape doesn't get damaged. With that done, I took some clear acrylic rods and cut them at angles on either end to make something like a geode sticking out of the gaps in the mirrors. I then applied three levels of blue with my airbrush to the gap in the mirrors. One was a simple teal color, followed by a white right in the area where the gap widened, and then a dark blue in the area where the gap got narrow, like it got brighter and darker depending on the width of this ectoplasmic goo. Now, it could stay like this, giving the impression that whatever was below the mirror level glowed, but I wanted to remove it, and with some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton q-tip, I wiped it away. This gave the base a nice clean look. 
I then took some gamer's grass, blue tufts, and added them amongst my crystals. I almost forgot the crystals. The potion. <laughs> If it wasn't obvious enough that this is clearly an alien world, it should be now. I finished it up with a black base rim and it was complete. Now you have an option for your metal wizards or zinch demons and everyone in between. Before we move on to our next base, let's talk about the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Gamers Grass, which is awesome. It's awesome because long before Gamers Grass approached me to do sponsored content, I had been using their products. They have a large variety of products, but what I love are their tiny tufts, which are great for adding small variations to your basing foliage. And I also love their short 2mm tufts, which serve as great options for scale and loss. Beyond that, they have all sorts of options for flowers and cattail weedy looking things to alien shrubs. If you're not into making your own bases, they also make fully completed bases, which is a product I haven't seen in any other company. These bases are fully painted and tufted out, so all you have to do is glue on your painted miniature and you're good to go. Gamers Grass is a big believer in the local hobby store, so there's a good chance that the product's available to you locally. For me, I can find some of their stuff in a store near me. In the description, I have a link that will help you identify the closest store selling Gamers Grass products. Thanks for watching this video, Gamers Grass. If you want to check out their online store, I've also linked that below in the description. Now, back to basing. All right, now we're going to start spicing things up with slightly larger bases. A lot of you wanted to see a marble base, and I've never done one, so that'd be a good challenge. Step one was to take my circle cutter and cut some fairly thin styrene into a disc the approximate diameter of my base. I then cut this into various tile shapes with the help of a ruler and my cutting mat grid. After I had all my tiny tile pieces, I cleaned them up and tapered them slightly with some sandpaper. The idea was that when I put them back together, there would be a gap in between them. Once I had them positioned correctly, I glued them down with some thin plastic cement. I then added a second level to my base by gluing down some square styrene stock and trimming it to the diameter of the base. I could then glue down the other half of my styrene disc and do the same thing to this upper area with the tiling. I then got to use a fun new product. This is a piece of rectangular aluminum that I found at Hobby Lobby that's incredibly pliable. I used it to hide the hollow part of my base and adhered it with super glue. A metal this bendable is going to have a lot of uses as you'll see later. I then took a tiny triangle file and deepened the grooves on the top platform because I didn't do a good enough job sanding them down in the first place. It's worth mentioning that if you scored a line with an X-Acto knife and then filed it with this triangle file, that would be a good alternative to cutting the pieces. I just think that cutting the tiles and sanding the edges when done right makes for a more striking effect. The file creates a little burr along the edge of the styrene, so make sure to sand the surface flush to get a nice clean look. I also applied some more thin plastic cement to the grooves to melt down little bits of styrene that I couldn't see. For the last bit of construction, I added a stair riser in front of the step. I cut and filed this to size. I feel like while this detail isn't necessary, it cleans up the base a lot. Now on to painting. I hit the base with a black base coat and then used a trick I heard from a patron. I took some dryer sheets, stretched them out, and got them as flat as I could against my base, and then airbrushed a white through them like a mask. And initially, I was pretty disappointed. So I kept doing it using a variety of sheets and shades of white, gray, and black. I probably ended up doing three to four different passes of colors and shapes. And it ended up looking like a great two scale marble, but with one obvious problem. The fabric softener in the sheet deposited onto the base, creating a texture. An obvious solution to this in retrospect is to use a sheet that's been used and has no softener left. Alternatively, people use baby wipes that have been dried out. They use a similar fabric that results in a great marble effect without the fabric softener that you find in typical dryer sheets. Either way, I soldered on, confident that the next steps would make it look good. I painted the riser and the trim of the platform gold because I felt like the marble needed to be broken up a little bit and it gave the base a really nice regal feel. Once that was done, I added three to four coats of gloss varnish to make the marble grain nice and shiny and to deepen some of that grain. This also served to smooth out some of the texture that I had accidentally applied. Lastly, I painted the grout lines in a dark gray to add even more separation. I painted that base rim black and now you can make a cool base for your such as Battle, a Heavenly Knight, or Radical Priest. On to the last base. Step one for this base is to source something that you could use as a sewer pipe in your house. 
paint dropper bottles, empty pen casing, some styrene, a lot of things can work, so get resourceful. I'm using a jewelry container. I marked out 45 degrees on a tea bevel and then marked it on my pipe with a sharpie and cut it with a hobby saw. This cut of quite a bit of plastic chaff on it, so I cleaned it up with some sandpaper. I glued the bottom piece to the base and then the top piece on. The idea being that you could have someone on top of the pipe leaping off, or if your pipe was big enough, someone could be inside the pipe. I then took some more of that lovely aluminum trim and added a decorative element to the top and bottom of the pipe. This not only serves to add more variety to the surface of the pipe, but it also hides some possibly jagged or uneven cuts. I also added some more round aluminum trim to the angle for even more variety. I love this stuff and can imagine so many applications for it. I then added some light molding paste to the base as a ground cover and built up a ramp from the back to the front. You could do this with epoxy putty and sand or about a million other things. I scuffed up the plastic and aluminum with some 500 grit sandpaper and primed the whole thing black. Onto the painting. I took some sponge and sponged on two kinds of silver with a dark and bright one. I was much heavier with the dark because it was essentially my base coat, but I didn't fully cover the black, leaving some nice texture below. The sponge is also nice because it can't reach into the deepest parts, which results in essentially free shading. No washing needed. Once the silver was done, I also sponged on some dark brown and some orange rusty tones to really beat this thing up. Next up, I imagine this pipe has some green goo running through it, so I took Tamiya clear green and added some drips down the seams, like they had began to rust and form holes. Next up, I applied a brown base coat to my earth and wet blended a bright yellow in the front to act as an undercoat for what I was going to do next. I took light green ink from Dollar and Ronnie, which is becoming a favorite color of mine, and applied it to where the yellow was, and also inside the pipe. Since this ink is semi-opaque, and has an above average cover capacity when compared to typical inks. When that was nice and electric green, I added some dark green to the area between the brown and the electric green to help the blend a little. I wanted the goo to be dripping out of the pipe and I needed something for it to grip onto. I took some thin plastic and made a sort of armature out of it, cutting it into the shapes of falling water essentially. I glued this in place and now it's time for the fun part. Time to mix up some Nickelodeon-esque slime. I took Liquitex liquid sand, the stuff we used in the beach base, and mixed it with gloss medium in hopes that I would make it more glossy, some of that lime green ink, and some of that Tamiya green clear. My hope was that it would be somewhat translucent still, which is why the thin plastic is great. It can give the slime structure while being invisible once covered. I slapped this stuff on, making sure to cover all the thin plastic and all the areas around it so it looked like natural slime. This stuff shrinks as it dries, so you may notice that some of your plastic skeleton is sticking out once you leave it for a day. I had to apply two layers to fully hide it. Don't forget that the liquid sand has some sculptability, so have some fun with making some goopy, drippy textures with your brush. For some more slime texture, I took some tiny glass spheres, which are used in nail art, and sprinkled them amidst the drying slime and pushed them below the surface. These little spheres make for fantastic scale bubbles. Lastly, I added some tiny tufts from gamer's grass and in a variety of other bits of foliage to act as moss growing on the pipe to increase the aged feel. I painted the basement in black, and that's all four bases done. Making bases is so much fun. They're like very small dioramas that don't take much time. I've done two more videos in this same style, so if you need more ideas, check out those videos. It's important to remember that with all of these bases, the idea and the steps presented can be separated. You may like the idea of a beach base, but not the idea of sculpting sand waves. If that's the case, think of an easier solution, like using golden light molding paste and painting in the sand waves with a damp brush. Maybe you like the marble base, but don't want to add a step. The process shown allows for you to make a base without a step, so just don't do it, and that will simplify matters greatly. Typically, I want to take my bases to the next level because I'm only making one base and not enough for an army. Maybe these kinds of bases can be used for characters, and everyone else in your army gets a simpler one. You can take inspiration without fully committing to the ideas that I've shown. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. If you guys like the channel and you want to support it, there are a number of ways that you can do it, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week and chat about your miniature painting projects, or the best way to recreate Nickelodeon Slime. You can also support me by buying procs that I recommend in the description below. In fact, a lot of the things that I use to make the base are linked down there. I sell a vampire miniature and a digital course for that miniature if you want to check that out. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! But most importantly, don't forget to... Hey!
Mine! Mine!